then she looks at me and she says, honey, you need to come with me right now. And then she looks at my ex fiance and says, do you know her information if she becomes unresponsive? Hello friends. This week is World Heart Rhythm Week, which is a week that spreads awareness and encourages detection of irregular heart rhythms. So I thought that this week would be the perfect time for me to share my story of how I was diagnosed with SVT and how it actually brought me here to YouTube talking to all of you today. I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I'll probably say that a couple more times throughout the video. This is just my own personal experience and the information I was given on my own personal diagnosis. For anyone sitting there wondering what the heck is SVT, it actually stands for supraventricular tachycardia. And essentially it's a fast heartbeat caused by a heart arrhythmia. And SVT is more of a blanket term used to cover a bunch of different types of heart arrhythmias. For the past 10 to 15 years of my life, I would get random moments where my heart felt dizzy, where I would get skips or flips, but I got them very infrequently, two or three times a year, and they wouldn't last very long. As quickly as I would get them, a minute or less later, the feeling would be gone. I was born a preemie, I was born two months early, so I honestly always assumed that maybe something was off with my heart, maybe it didn't develop right, but that if it was serious, my doctor would have figured it out by now. So I never really paid that much attention to it. I brushed it off until everything changed one afternoon. I had been drinking the night before alcoholic beverages that also had caffeine in them. I got up the next afternoon to get ready for work. I was dehydrated and I decided to take a super hot shower to feel better. If you have a heart arrhythmia, I know what you're thinking. Uh oh, <laughs> those are all really bad triggers for people with heart arrhythmias. I didn't know at the time, so I am taking my super hot shower and I feel my heart start to flip. I'm like, it's okay, this is happened before, it'll go away. Well, a minute passes, three minutes, five minutes, and it's not stopping. So I decide I should probably get out of the shower and tell someone, just in case. So I get out of the shower, I put my clothes on and I find my ex-fiance who I was living with at the time and I say, honey, my heart is doing that, that weird thing again. It's okay, I just wanted to let you know. Well, he stops me and looks at me and says, okay, you're sounding a little out of breath, you're pale and you're sweating. Can I take you to the hospital? I have very bad hospital anxiety, so right away I was like, no, no thank you, I'm fine, everything's fine. Well, then he gave me that look, that look people give you when they're really scared, but they're trying to act brave hate that look. So I was like, fine, like, let's go to the hospital. Everything's fine. It'll make you feel better. I'll go get checked out. So we got there about 45 minutes later, or it was 45 minutes since my heart had started to skip. And we got into triage right away. And the nurse hooked me up to that machine, the machine that checks your blood pressure and your heart rate. And the second she plugged me in, it starts beeping, that loud warning beeping noise that something is wrong. I'm still more calm than I maybe should be because I'm trying not to panic. I panic easily. It's okay. It's no big deal. That doesn't mean anything. And then she looks at me and she says, honey, you need to come with me right now. And then she looks at my ex fiance and says, do you know her information if she becomes unresponsive? When the word unresponsive starts getting thrown around, it gets pretty hard to not start panicking. So, I was beginning to panic on my way to the hospital room. I was hooked up to everything I needed to be hooked up to quickly, heart monitor, EKG, blood pressure, IV, etc. The doctor came in shortly after and was informed on what was going on. She looks up at the heart monitor that is now beeping again since I've been hooked up to it. And she says, resting heart rate, 250 beats per minute. So I am not a doctor. But what I have been told by my doctor is that someone from my age, height, weight, health, etc., 250 beats per minute is pretty high for a resting heart rate. And I knew that in the moment. So my panic was definitely rising a level. <laughs> then the doctor comes up to me and says, okay, we're gonna have to administer a drug called adenosine. Essentially, it's going to stop your heart for a second. It's like a reset button for your heart. <laughs> what and then she says i should also tell you 
it feels terrible. It almost feels like you're dying, but it's only in your system for a minute and then it's gone. You're gonna give me what? So then they kick my ex-fiance out and I think I mouth something to him like, I'll miss you, don't forget me because I was so sure I was gonna die. And they give me the adenosine. And the best way I can describe it from my own experience is it feels like one of two things. It feels like you're being poisoned or it feels like you were on that ride at the fair, the one that spins really fast. There's no seatbelt, but gravity kind of keeps it pushed against it as it spins. That's what it feels like. And it's an awful feeling. But like the doctor told me, within a minute, it was out of my system. So I'm laying there being relieved. And then I realized that my heart's still skipping. I look up at the monitor and my heart was now, I think 270 beats per minute because I was panicking. So the doctor comes out to me because I start crying and say, oh God, I'm gonna die. I'm too young to die, this sucks. And she does that, she says, no, <laughs> you have to calm down. Don't start panicking. And she puts her finger at the screen and says, wait for it. Wait for it and my heart rate goes down. I think it went down to either 100 or 90 beats per minute. So once she realizes I'm okay, she kicks everyone out and brings my ex-fiance back in. And I'm tired, I'm just laying there like emotionally, physically exhausted. And she's like inappropriately excited, like giddy. She comes over to me and she says, has this ever happened to you before? Uh, no. <laughs> I've had a couple skips, but nothing like this. So she goes through all the data she's gathered and she looks at me and she says, do you know what you have? And I'm like, well, damn, I was hoping I didn't have anything. You have SVT. So I was released the same day and I was very fortunate to be able to see a cardiologist two or three weeks later. And I was given a plan starting at one, ending with three. Number one would be to do nothing. There are different types of heart arrhythmia. Some are much more dangerous than others. I was told by my doctor that mine isn't super dangerous as long as I got medical intervention if it didn't stop on its own within a certain time frame. So step one, just make some lifestyle changes and see if that helps. Step two, if that doesn't work, was to put me on medication. And if medication doesn't work, step three was to get heart surgery. Unfortunately, three or four months later, after needing adenosine two or three more times in that short time frame, my doctor called me in and said that he had sent in the request for me to get heart surgery because it was my best chance at living a normal life again. But I do have some people asking me, how are you doing now? Well, the best way that I can describe it is I am better, but I'm not cured. I have some good days and I have some bad days. I am super thankful for my ablation because I have not needed adenosine since. Knock on wood. I have been in the hospital with heart problems plenty, but they are able to fix it without needing adenosine, which in itself is super exciting and super wonderful. I unfortunately now have kind of a different problem where I get something called PVCs, which stands for premature ventricular contractions. I get them almost every day, but again, they're usually not harmful. They probably won't hurt me. They just feel uncomfortable, but there are some days where I'll only get a few. And then there's some days where I can get three to 500 in a day, which to me seems like a lot, but I've been told there are people who get thousands. So I try to consider myself lucky and count my blessings where I can. So it is something I still deal with daily. I am working with my doctor to see if there's any more treatment options for me. I'm not sure if any of you can see it, but I am currently wearing a heart monitor. Probably my hundredth heart monitor I've worn in my life. But I have had to make some really big lifestyle changes, which can be hard at 25. I am a year and a half sober for many reasons, with them mostly being because alcohol is a trigger for my heart. I am almost two years gluten-free because I noticed when I ate a lot of wheat that it would bother my heart. And I haven't had a cup of coffee, a glass of Coca-Cola, or a piece of chocolate in almost three years. It honestly can be difficult sometimes at my age to give up alcohol, wheat, and caffeine. 
but to me it's worth it because it allows me to have more good days than bad days and it really does let me be optimistic for the future so this is my story i thought it was the perfect time to share it with all of you but i will be incorporating my heart condition into my channel a little bit more going forward just because it is a part of me it does make me who i am my heart condition is actually one of the main reasons why i'm here talking to all of you today I got a job in my field right out of college about a year ago and I ended up having to leave it shortly after because it was very physically demanding and it was very hot. It was just a little bit too much for my little heart. So in order to keep my spirits up and to try to keep my creativity flowing, I decided to start a YouTube channel. I ultimately hope that this spreads awareness and if you have been diagnosed with a heart condition, I am so sorry. It can be very scary and very upsetting, but I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear about your symptoms. What kind of tipped you off that something was wrong? How are you diagnosed? And how are you doing now? Please tell me your stories in the comments, or if you'd like a little bit more privacy, feel free to message me on any of my social media accounts. I would love to connect with you and I would love to offer some support. But that's going to be everything for today. Please use this video as a message to spread awareness. I've seen babies getting diagnosed with SVT and I've seen people in their 80s. Also use it as a message that not all disabilities are visible. So always try to bring kindness wherever you go because you never really know what kind of battle anyone is going through. I wish you all health and happiness. Talk to your doctor if you have any more questions or concerns or you'd just like to learn more because although I cannot give you any medical advice, your doctor can. Thank you for letting me share my story and we will be back to our regular scheduled programming next week. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button and also make sure to subscribe. I'll be putting out new videos every week, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey YouTube, The Ordinary Girl here. The Ordinary Girl here. The Ordinary Girl here. The Ordinary Girl here. <laughs>